Hey, Stewart's Chapel, Don Pearson here in Don Counts, and this is September the 30th, um, Thursday to be exact, Thursday's devotion in the week of September the 30th. Um, we're continuing our look at some of the words that God uses to talk about suffering um, that we may endure. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the word sifting, sifting, and we're in uh, Luke 22, Luke 22, verses 31 through 32. Luke 22, verse 31 and 20, 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren unfortunately this is one of those sections of scripture it's only two verses that is packed with uh, meaning when i say unfortunately it's unfortunate because all the meaning is found in the Greek words that God chooses to use, and they're hidden in the English words. Some of you are reading in the King James. Uh, actually, um, the King James translation actually helps you to understand these two verses better than other translations. Let me tell you why. In the King James Y's are plural and T's are singular. What's that mean? Well, in the Old English, when they were talking to an individual, they used a bunch of T words, thee, thou, or thine. So that's, that's how, so if they were talking to an individual, they would say thee, thou, or thine. If they were talking to two or more, they would use Y words, ye, you, or your. Well, in the King James, in the King James, they follow that, that suit by um, staying with the T's and the Y's. And that's important in this verse because you see, Jesus switches from plural to singular and singular to plural. He literally singles out Simon. He calls him Simon, Simon. But... Listen to what he says. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you. He's not saying Simon, Simon. Satan wants to sift Simon. He's saying Simon, Simon. Satan wants to sift all of you, meaning all of my, all of his disciples. Satan has asked for you. That and um, and so that's plural. But then in verse 32, when Jesus says what he has done, but I, that being Jesus, have prayed for you, it's actually singular. So here's the idea. You're sitting with Jesus. It's at the end of the, it's the wonderful Thursday night before the crucifixion. You're sitting with Jesus, and Jesus turns to you, sitting next to him or near him, in the midst of 11 other men, and Jesus turns to you and says, Hey, hey, Simon, did you know that Satan has asked to sift all of you in here? And you're going, really? And then he looks at you and says, Simon, but don't worry. I am praying for you, Simon. Now, all the other ones are listening, and they're going, Did he just say what I think I heard him say? Did he just say that Satan wants to sift all of us? But did he just turn around and say that he is only praying for Simon? Well, that's exactly what is happening. And you miss that in the English because that's literally what is happening. Satan is going to sift all of them, but Jesus has chosen to pray for Simon. Now, you've got to understand me. There are no errors in Scripture, and Jesus never prayed wrong. You and I would think, well, prayer is prayer, so why don't he just pray for all of them? Sometimes the best way to pray for a bunch of people is to pray for one. The best way to pray for a family often is to pray for the head of the family. The best way to pray for a nation sometimes is pray for the leader of that nation. 
The best way to pray for a church sometimes is to pray for the leader of that church. And I said, literally what has happened, Jesus has already made it very clear that Peter is the rock. Peter is the leader of the group. Jesus chooses to pray. You think, well, I mean, while you're praying, why don't you just go ahead and pray for all of them? <laughs> Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus never prays wrong, nor does he throw out a bunch of extra prayers. He always prays right, and he prays with a rifle, not a shotgun. And that's what's happening here. Sifting, sifting is quick, fast, and it's brutal, but it's temporary. It doesn't last. It's the thorn. The thorn lasts. Uh, your cross is supposed to last. Trials are supposed to be temporary. Rain comes and goes. Sifting comes in and it's violence, it's aggressive. Satan's purpose for sifting is so that only thing that is left is, is the wood, hay, and stubble. But God's purpose for allowing Satan to sift us is so that all the precious remains. It's the same sieve. It's the same sifting. But the end result is two different things. Satan wants to sift in order to destroy. God allows the sifting in order to strengthen. And that's what he says. He says, Peter, I'm praying for you, Peter, so that when you are brought back, after the sifting is over and you are restored, he is given a call. What is his call? You are to strengthen the brethren. And he does that. Oh my goodness, he does that. When Peter, Peter stumbles and falls, but after that, he comes back and he is the one that strengthens the others. That's what happens with um, sifting. The other thing I, I, man, you can tell I've preached on this a few times. The other interesting thing is, is the prayer words in here. There's actually two prayer words in this scripture, but our English hides the first one. Did you hear Satan has, some translation says he has desired you. My translation has asked for you. It's actually a Greek word that is a prayer word that is exoteomai. Exoteomai. It is a type of praying that is done from above to one that is seen below. Satan storms into the presence of of God the Almighty, and he comes in with himself up here. He doesn't bow, and he uses the word exoteomai, which means I demand, I'm telling you, give me them. Give me the disciples. And he says, exoteomai, exoteomai. It's always a praying that is down. You and I are never to pray like that. We're never to approach God's throne and to pray down to him as though he was some kind of servant of ours to do our bidding by simply saying, well, I pray in the name of Jesus, so you better do this. We're never told to exoteomai. Jesus comes in and he says, I have prayed for you. But he uses the word deomai. Deomai is, the, is this. Detomai is to come into the presence in a lowly state. And literally the image, here comes Satan. You've got to see the conjure. Satan comes. Here's God sitting on the Father on the throne. Here comes boiling in Satan. I mean, he just comes running in and he just says, Ex-o-mai. And then you have the Father sitting on the throne and here comes the Son. And he comes crawling in. Crawling in like a beggar and he says, Detomai. De- oh my. Father, I beg you. And he's doing that for Peter, and that's what, they, that's what the disciples heard. They heard him use the word exoteomai, and he used, he used the word used deadomai. Can you imagine if our Lord and Savior prays for us in this moment in the form of detomai? Now, most of the time when, the, when it talks about Jesus talking with the Father, it is proyuskamai, proyuskamai, which is used between two that are brought to the same level, a father to a son. When you and I are told to pray, we are told to pray from proyuskamai. 
We are brought in boldly to talk to the Father as a son. But in this case, where Jesus is pleading, he comes in as a humble beggar pleading. What's interesting is by what we know, God the Father answered both prayers. He, answered, he gave Satan the disciples to sift. He had a purpose in that. But he also answered the prayer of his son and intervened into Simon Peter's life. And when Simon Peter fell, he came, was brought back and he was strengthened in order to strengthen. Sifting is always about strengthening from God's side. From the enemy side, it's always about destroying. Sifting is always the whole. You don't just sift one little grain of wheat. That's why it's not just Peter that's being sifted. They're all being sifted. The Satan can sift a family. He can sift a church. He can sift a denomination. He can sift a nation. But he can't just sift one. It's always in the plural. It's always the whole it's temporary. We must keep the faith and we must strengthen others. How are you doing when you're in the sieve of Satan? Understand that when you're in the sieve, you're never alone. There's others there that you love probably just as much that are in the midst of the same thing. Love you, Stuart Chapel.